Okay, so if you're selling books between $6.99 and $9.99, then you absolutely must have a low risk launch strategy for your books. So what we're doing with this is taking a look at my launch strategy for pretty much every single book that I publish. Now, this is mainly applicable to lower price books that are in competitive niches. So coloring books, low content books and medium content books in general. Okay, so we're going to do this in two parts. We're going to take a look at the setup and we're gonna take a look at the execution as well. And as we go through this video, I'm gonna be using some of my own books and campaigns as examples. So, so this strategy for me is the best middle ground in terms of giving your book the best chance possible whilst not getting emotionally attached to your book and spending too much money and time on that project before moving on to the next one, okay? So let's talk about the setup. The setup is gonna be extremely beneficial to your book. It's gonna help you stand out from the crowd and it's gonna help you set up automatic advertising campaigns so that you don't have to worry about loads of fancy different strategies so that your auto ads, they set up and they perform very well. So let's go through with the setup now and we're gonna start with the niche. So at the start of the setup here, we obviously have to have our niche in mind. Now this is my criteria when it comes to entering into a niche that the broad niche must have traffic going to it. So we'll take a look on Amazon just to give you a quick example of this in just a second. The second and one of the most important criteria is here is that the niche that you enter into, you must be able to get creative within, especially with coloring books and the amount of competition these days, you have to be creative. And when you are creative, like I've said to people recently, this can be a life changing pursuit. So we're going to grab a couple free tools and we're going to do a quick bit of niche research. And then we're going to go on to the second part of the setup. So let's head over to Amazon and we're going to do a little bit of research just for the first niche that comes to mind, which is bold and easy coloring book, which pretty much everybody knows about already. But my criteria when it comes to making sure that the niche has got traffic going to it, the broad niche, which is bold and easy coloring books. My criteria here is that I look for three or four books on the first page that are independently published that have a BSR of let's just say under 50,000, under 40,000 or under 30,000. It really doesn't matter that much. We just need to see that there is some sales traffic going to these books. So as you scroll through, especially for the bold and easy coloring books, you can see that the BSRs are extremely low, extremely low, which means of course that there is traffic going to this niche. And for bold and easy coloring books, the next step is going to be more important probably than any other niche at the moment. So this is all part of the setup, the niche, we find the niche, we make sure that it's got buyer traffic going to it, whether it's bold and easy coloring books, whether it's coloring book for seniors, whether it's activity books for kids, we just need to make sure that there is some buyer traffic going to it. We don't want to waste our time entering into niches where no one is buying those books. Okay. So this takes me on to my second part of the setup, which is going to be the angle for your book. So whatever your unique selling point is, whatever is going to make your book stand out from the competition. So the different ways that you can stand out from the competition, your angle can be the book cover. Obviously, if you have the best book cover in your niche, you increase your chances of being the one that makes the sales in those niches massively, massively, excuse me. However, from my experience of talking to people recently is that it's extremely unlikely for you to have the absolute best book cover in your niche. So from there, we can take a look at creating a unique concept. And we're going to do an example of this in just a second, but it's got to make sense for the niche that you're targeting. It can't just be anything random. The target audience has to be interested in your unique concept. And another thing we're going to touch upon really quickly, which I've been talking to some of the Raydog members about recently is targeting unique keywords. So for a lot of these books, like the bold and easy coloring books, you're not really going to have a chance when it comes to getting ranked for that specific search term. So what I've been looking at doing recently is to use advertising data to use for my keywords that I'm targeting in my title and my subtitle. I'm not going to go into that into too much detail. However, that does give us the opportunity to stand out with keywords that not everybody else is targeting when it comes to using Amazon search bar and using niche research tools. So if everyone's using the same research tools, everyone's using Amazon search bar, then you're likely all going to be using the exact same keywords that you're going to be targeting. So that's a very unique way that you can pull keywords from your advertising data to create new titles and subtitles from. 
So everything that I talk about on this channel is actively what I am doing myself for my publishing business. And every single Friday inside of the Ray Dog membership, we have live calls where I show off the books that I'm publishing, my main books, the best selling books, the books that are coming that I've got coming out. And of course, the bigger picture here where we're selling away from Amazon, creating brand stores and not being held back by all the restrictions that come with selling just through Amazon. And we have a ton of course content as well from day number one you can get access to all of my courses everything that you need is inside of this membership if you want to check that out that's going to be chrisradio.com it's linked in the description below so now that we have the niche and we've established that there's buyer traffic going to it we then go ahead we put whatever angle we can onto our niche then from here the next part of the setup which is what i recommend every single person does is to create a keyword cloud. So you can use ChatGPT to do this or you can use the paid tools, whatever you want. We just want to come up with a ton of relevant keywords for our book because this is gonna help us create a very specific targeted title and subtitle, which is going to then help you with your automatic campaigns when you launch your book. So this setup, everything put together works extremely, extremely well. So we're gonna use the chat GBT method for this video. Now, if you're using paid tools, I don't really recommend any at the moment because I'm not using any myself. However, if you do have a tool that has a reverse ASIN um, feature, then I highly recommend using that to create your keyword cloud. I think some of them already have keyword clouds built into them like Helium 10 Cerebro. I just find it a little bit too expensive to recommend. So just as a quick example here, we can come over to ChatGPT and say, create a keyword cloud that I can use for my title, subtitle, backing keywords for my Christmas bold and easy coloring book for adults and kids and say, present this in a table so that I can see this easily. Then we're gonna go ahead and press enter. And as we can see, ChatGPT is coming back with a keyword cloud for our bold and easy coloring book. It's, it's divided into different sections, main theme, keywords, target audience, descriptive style, content specific keywords, emotions, etc. Now this is great. I didn't realize ChatGPT was gonna come back with this, but I would actively, um, and I have been actively using this to create the titles and subtitles for my books. In fact, this is even better than what I was doing before. So I'm probably gonna keep this where we have some main keyword ideas, the audience ideas, the descriptive ideas, the content specific ideas, and some emotions and benefits as well. I typically be using, or primarily, sorry, be using this to create the titles for my books, but this is gonna give you a great um, ton, a great load of keywords that you can use for your backend slot as well. And they're all gonna be super relevant to your niche, which we know is gonna help us when we come to launching our books, okay? So that's your keyword cloud. Now from there, the last part of our setup is gonna be the book cover. Now, in my opinion, book covers equal organic sales. So I'm not gonna get into why I think that is at the moment. It comes down to what Amazon is going to obviously prioritize, which is gonna be the, the clicks on your book and then the conversions. Let's not worry about that, but book covers are super, super important. Now from my years of doing this and talking to people about this, the biggest problem people have is not understanding if their books are ready to launch onto Amazon. So most people think they have a 10 out of 10 book cover when really it's a three out of 10. And if you do not nail your book cover from day one, from the launch of your book, then nothing else is going to matter. So I'm gonna highly, highly suggest that if you are not sure if your books are good enough to launch onto Amazon, is that you check out the seller forum from the Raydog membership because it is changing the game for a lot of people who come into the forum, they get feedback on their book covers. And then when the feedback is good enough, then they have more confidence in launching their books. But also on top of that, it makes sure that people don't get stuck creating the same shit book covers for every single book. We want to progress people, make that gap smaller between us and the bigger publishing companies on Amazon. And this is what the seller forum is helping people do. So the seller forum is a huge part of the membership. It's included with everything else that we've spoken about in the video, the live calls, the course content, the discord group is obviously included as part of this as well. So as you can see the seller forum here, people are using it, people are using this every single day to get feedback on book covers. Now this takes up around 40 to 50% of the activity inside of our Discord community because it's so effective and so important that we get feedback. And you will get my direct feedback on what you're doing with your book covers as well when you post them into the seller forum. So again, if you wanna check that out, that's chrisradog.com.
it's going to be linked in the description below so outside of using the seller forum of course you get you can get feedback from friends and family and in facebook groups and things like that however my experience with getting feedback from friends and family is typically that they will just tell you what you want to hear and on facebook nobody really cares and the thing is with the seller forum um, we have people who are actively selling books actively publishing actively learning and getting better and better and better and therefore can give you much better feedback on what you're doing as well so that is the setup super important because we need to then go through with this and launch our books onto amazon so the execution is to utilize the honeymoon period and then use metrics to see if the project will perform long term so no matter what anybody says you are not going to sell a hundred percent of your books and make profit from 100% of your books, which is why it's super important that we have some kind of cutoff metric after we've given our book the best chance possible by releasing during the honeymoon period. So let's talk about this now and let's talk about launching with ads. So one of the, the biggest things here, before you start running advertising campaigns, you have to consider, you have to really, really be real with yourself and ask yourself, are you ready to run ads to your books? So as soon as you press the launch campaign button inside of your advertising account you are basically declaring to the customers on amazon that you are an expert in your niche or you are very good and you can compete inside of your niche which is of course why i recommend people get as much feedback on what they are doing before they jump into this but if you are testing this if you are ready then you want to make sure that you have a budget you are comfortable with and what i found from doing this for a long time is that if i say that I have a budget of $200 per book per launch that I'm comfortable with, then a lot of other people will do that. Do that. They will have a $200 launch budget when they are not comfortable with that, okay? So obviously there's gonna be a sacrifice here. If your budget is lower, if it's $20, $30, then you have to find a way to create content for cheaper, okay? If your budget isn't that high, you have to work with it and you have to accept that possibly you're not gonna get as much data back from Amazon, you're going to um, have a smaller chance of making long term sales if your budget is shorter. But it's not for me to tell anyone what their budget should be. It's just for me at this point, it's around $200 just to get enough information for the different metrics that we're following, which we'll talk about in the next slide here. So this is the thing you want to aim to get as many clicks as possible within that budget. So there's not going to be one set way of having success with ads or getting the lowest cost per click possible. I tend to set up around three different automatic campaigns. Then if they don't perform, then I start testing product targeting campaigns. Now, if you're doing the bold and easy coloring books, I found that product targeting does very well and you can get your clicks down to sometimes as low as eight cent. It's going to be higher than that now. My recent book is hovering around 20 cent and I'm reducing that at the moment. We're going to take a look at that in just a second, those advertising metrics, so you can get a better understanding of how I'm, mon uh, how I'm managing my advertising whilst launching the book during this honeymoon period, okay? So from here, we want to track the keyword rankings when our sales start coming in. So when you start getting two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 ish sort of sales, then you're going to see after the first week of your book being live on Amazon that you're going to start getting ranked for different search terms. So those different search terms, they're primarily and to begin with, they're going to be the ones that you use, the keywords that you use inside the title and the subtitle. Typically, it's the title first and then variations of your subtitle and title. But I like to make sure that I track these to see that I'm getting some good rankings for um, logical search terms because it all ends up helping me make a decision if I continue with the project or not. So the reason I like to launch at the very start, so run advertising campaigns from the very first day the book goes live is because the general feel is that the first month, two, three weeks, um, or two, three, four weeks of your book going live is that Amazon is going to give you some preferential treatments and preferential visibility where you want to make the most of that and try and get some sales. And what I found is that you can get your books ranked for some pretty competitive keywords after just a handful of sales. Now, whether you stay ranked for those keywords comes down to your book cover, your angle, unique setting point, all those things that really matter to keep you ranked organically, okay? What we're gonna do now is we're gonna go into the metrics for the latest book that I have released. It is actually a bold and easy coloring book. We're gonna take a look 
at how the, the metrics that we use and how we can determine how well the book is doing to make sure that we don't stay attached to this book for a long time and we spend tons of money um, for a book that isn't destined to do well for us. I've known some people to spend $5,000, $6,000, $7,000 because they think they should be running ads for a prolonged period. And there is something in that. I understand that running ads for a long time can result in more organic placements but if your book isn't isn't showing good signs in the first month then after the first three or four months it's probably not going to do that well either now again if you're doing low content medium content or low price books should i say there will be a failure percentage to your book so you can't keep running ads forever and ever just hoping that it's going to affect the organic sales massively okay so this is why we hit this nice middle ground that we're talking about the setup and the execution so what metrics are we following so we're taking a look at the cost per click i'm going to explain all of this on one of my campaigns in a second the advertising orders the rankings the number of clicks and the organic sales so i should be able to use one of my books as an example inside of um, the next slide Okay, so we're going to go into my latest release here. Now, let's take a look. And this is going to be, it's going to look a little bit confusing at the moment, but don't want people to worry about this too much. So what we can see is that we're still within the first month of this book going live and we still sit within the budget. Okay, so my budget, like I said, is around $200 and then I'll only continue spending if it makes sense to do so. Okay, so your budget might be slightly different, but mine is around $200 for the first month and then i like to see during this first month and during the, this the amount that i'm spending how low i can get the cost per click and of course what the clicks versus the orders are okay so the clicks versus the orders are one in 20 pretty much bang on um this is okay for an automatic campaign for a bold and easy coloring book it seems high but pretty much all of my bold and easy coloring books they are at the same sort of conversions primarily i think because they're so competitive and so many options out there at the moment okay so the next metric that we're looking at so the clicks to orders is is absolutely fine then the next metric that we're going to look at is the cost per click and this is something i don't think people talk about enough but i tend to leave a campaign going for a very long time if i can get the cost per click down super super low so here's one of the strategies that i use to try and get the cost per click um, the best amount of clicks out of my campaign so what i like to do as you can see i start the campaigns quite high i know some people like to start the campaigns quite low i start them quite high and then i reduce pretty much every time that i break through like a 10 click barrier i've been doing this strategy for the last two years and i just don't find any other strategy for me to be as effective okay so i want to get the cost per click down as you can see we're at 19 cent we're going to easily break past six clicks um sorry we're going to easily break past 10 clicks today so tomorrow that means i'm probably going to drop this down by a couple more cent to 17 maybe 16 maybe 15 and we'll just keep letting the clicks coming in so i think when you drop your cost per click for an auto campaign it starts to target products which are going to be cheaper and they work quite well for bold and easy coloring books so that's another factor that i consider when it comes to continuing to run a campaign now i had another book where i couldn't get past 50 cent cost per click and none of the other metrics were adding up so i cut that campaign off and let the book roll organically so so during this period as well we've had 14 orders from advertising campaigns and we've had uh, 27 in total so we're having around 14 from ads and around 12 or 13 from organic okay so we're getting some organic sales as well which is a great sign organic sales is a huge indicator to continuing running advertising campaigns and the next factor of course was how we're doing with our rankings on amazon for certain keywords so i go over to amazon i search for different keywords or you can use a reverse asin um, software to do this and just see how the book is ranked now this book in particular it's not ranking for the keywords that i want it to so i'm going to let it go for a little bit longer and if it doesn't rank for those keywords i might start shutting down um, reducing some of these ads okay so just to give another example here for a book that i've published a couple months ago that i've been using as a kind of case study um, is a swear word coloring book now in terms of the book being ranked for logical search terms 
Um, as you can see, the book is, I think it's ranked on the, yeah, it's ranked on the first page still here, which is a great indication that this, without any advertising spend, that I've got the keywords right for this because it's sticking around on the first page. Now, when I looked at the, the metrics for the ads for this book, they weren't adding up. They weren't looking that good. However, we were getting some organic rankings. We were getting some organic sales. And now at this point, I've just turned the ads off completely almost. And we're just going to let this book see what it does during Q4. So at the moment, I think we were ranked 90,000 yesterday. We've dropped to 300,000 today. Um, so the book is making between, you know, 100 and $200 a month at the moment, which is fantastic because we've managed this book. It wasn't, I wasn't willing to risk a prolonged advertising spend when it's not a given that you will make more organic sales. And we've just upped the price and we've let it do its thing. So that's just another one of the strategies that I use. It's all about making smart decisions. So another one of the uses of the Raydog membership is that we open up the pro chat for members and the members can come in, drop their advertising stats inside of here because I understand that what I've just gone through can feel a little bit overwhelming, a little bit confusing, but people can come in here they can drop their, the screenshots of their advertising accounts just to get my feedback and I tend to go through it, put out some considerations and talk about the advertising, uh, the organic sales, the cost per click, the A cost, and then give a, a suggested action at the end of that as well. So that's part of the pro chat, um, which is part of the $47 a month membership. But again, super handy for helping people understand how to manage their books and their advertising campaigns. Again, this is one of the problems I think that comes with exclusively selling on Amazon is that you have to manage everything you're doing, manage your money, your advertising accounts. And a lot of it is based off of Amazon, you know, the, the rankings of your book, the cost per clicks that you're getting, things like this that you don't actually have that much control over. So what we've been exploring and what I'm actively doing myself and what I believe people should be super interested in pursuing is actually having your own brand store. So having your own website where you can reduce all the competition, especially for bold and easy coloring books. Imagine having no competition like Coco Wire. Uh, imagine not having to worry about your launch strategy and your keywords and things like that and selling away from Amazon. So we spoke about this last week or the week before inside the Raydog membership. And I think it's a very exciting, very interesting pursuit. It is what I'm actively doing for my main coloring book pen name to set up a web store and to attract customers there and sell them on other things like merchandise, et cetera, et cetera. So this is the benefit to having a brand store. We actually have a brand store service, a done for you brand store, brand store service that you can check out from the description below. It is my understanding that we are possibly the only place that offers this service. So if you want to check this out and how it all works and all the benefits, um, head over to chrisradocom forward slash brand store or just go into the description below. But that is it for the video. Um, if you want to check out the membership, it's going to be linked below. If you want to check out the brand stores, it's all linked below. Um, let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you in another video very soon.